Hello, um, this is going to be a lesson on doing some more stuff with some non, uh, some program command functions in Allen Bradley control logic. Um, basically, the thing that we need to talk about is rays, how to utilize them in a uh, control logic program and their benefits because oftentimes they're not really utilized in basic programming. Um, I have set up a simple program here, and I'm going to walk through this step by step, and we'll talk about everything. But first, I need to do a reminder on, on an array. Now, I'm going to go into controller tags, and you'll see that here's all my hardware. So this is my distributed. I, I'm going to see. Um, this is my distributed I/O over here. So my A and E T. That's all set up through my hardware, and you in. There's another video that will be set up to remind you how to set up your hardware. Um, and so here is all your ANET stuff. Here's your local stuff. So it's about the bus. Here's a start bit and some timers and counter arrays. A good sign that something is set up as an array is this bracketed number right here. So do you see that over here in the yellow? This bracketed number is a good sign that something is an array because if I open or open each of these areas, you'll see a bunch of dents, dent zero, dent one, dent two, dent three. Um, and if I open it, then you'll see the, the individual bits inside of that array. Since a dent is a 32 bit um, uh, digital footprint or uh, dig uh, digital uh, data type, um, it's got, if I open up one of these dents, you'll see 32 individual bits and that's what makes up it remembering a number from zero to really, really big. Um, I have done the same thing for bool of bools, but notice here it's bool bracket zero, bool bracket one, and all these will be on and off and I can use these in my program. I've done this for some one-shot bits, and we'll talk about that in a second because that's something that may not have been highlighted in uh, your first PLC class. I've done that with real numbers too, so anything that needs a decimal or a float, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so how I create an array is going to edit. So if I first I go into my controller tags, uh, you know, go in my controller tags or my program tags. If again, if I want something universally throughout the controller, it's a controller tag. If I just want it in my program, it's program tag. So, um, and this line right here, you can just start typing and stuff will auto populate. So if I go in and just type in array test, and if I hit enter, it's gonna default to a dint every single time. And if you look underneath, my dent is array test dat, dat, data zero. So it's everything like you've seen before, except without that bracketed number for the array. If I want to turn this into an array, I can click on the data type, and you'll see a little three-button box that shows up right there. So if, notice... Oh, it's gone now every time I click off. But you'll see a three little button, and this box appears, select data type. And this is every single data type that's already set up on the controller. A data type is how the PLC stores, da is th stores data, if it's a number or a bool or something. But there's a bunch of different types. If I want a, a bunch of big numbers to be saved sequentially in the, the computer, uh, in the PLC, this is where I would use an array. Um, think of it this way. If I, you ever go into someone's house, and if I showed you my office, this would be this way, and things are scattered everywhere, and it's really hard to find stuff, and it takes forever to find something. But if I go into a library that has a set, uh, like the Dewey Decimal System set up, so that I know where every book is, is categorized in like pairs, and I, in theory can go from one to another to another by the same author, it makes it easier to find. So in a, if I have a bunch of, say for instance, temperature readings from a process distributed over a day, and I want to utilize them for math, 
I may want to store them in an array of dits, double integers, or an array of reals, or an array of, of uh, integers. It doesn't matter if it can hold the number, but if I want to utilize that in an, in an array or some or in a, in a data structure that's, that's more organized, this is when I would use an array. And there's some benefits to that, as we will see in the next coming weeks. Um, but first, let's get used to using arrays. Um, so I'm going to set up a dent, and I could set up three-dimensional arrays. So if I'm trying to, for example, in a robotic programming structure, um, an X, Y, Z coordinate plane, that's a three-dimensional array. Um, we're not going to get that advanced, so let's just only look at dimension zero. So if I press this number up a bunch, this would set up 20 dents that I can utilize. I'm just going to go up to 32 because that's a nice even number for binary purposes. So I'll give me 32 dents. If I, and just for kicks, for this, I'm going to add one here just to show you what it does. It's going to actually double my arrays. So I uh, double my uh, dent. So hit OK. And now look, you'll see right here, 1 comma 32 within the within the brackets if i expand that and i'll make this bigger you'll see array 00 array 01 etc etc i can make this you know it's it's a one dimensional array so it's not going to double it if i did a two dimensional array let me just do it two let me just go two there i'll show you um Zero 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 one 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 because we always will have a one dimensional array when we set up the d d single numbers. But you can see if it's a two two dimensions, uh, but zero 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 one zero two, and if I open those up, then it becomes the bits that it stores. So this just allows me to get data bunched together in a orderly manner for me to utilize. I can still use these as single dits when I'm using math commands or something like that. But that's how I would set up an array, and that's the purpose of an array. And when when we go through a PLC1 class and show you this, um, you, people are like, well, what's the purpose of an array? Well, you'll see very shortly. But let me go back to my main routine. A couple bits of reminder. Um, this here is a status bit that's for the first scan, and we'll go true in the first scan. I have set up some good programming habits to reset up my counters and timers and i'll talk about this in a second but i have a move command to set something up here to zero we'll get to what this is in a second but something i want to point out is one of the benefits of having an ar numbers used in an array if you normally have to clear out or, or set something to zero of one single dint you'll probably use a move command, move zero into a dent, all right? That could, and that is something that is perfectly allowable. But if I have like 32 dents that need to be cleared out, a move command becomes impractical. However, if I have it in a dent array, and if I start using these dent arrays in my thing, like dent, dent bracket one, two, three, four, and do all that with my math, I can use a command called CLR, clear, and clear out the whole array in one command. And to everyone who's ever programmed, you will say now, oh, that is so much easier. So I have this first system bit scan here. It's going to clear all that out. Now, this, I'm gonna, this is just a dent right now, and I'm doing that move, a, a constant three on the first scan, into dent, dent x which is zero. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. Um, but that's just a sense of simple setup. So now if I go online, and I'm just going to go into uh, my program tags for a second, or my, my controller tag, sorry. And, it, and I'm just going to put in dent numbers, you know, some random dent numbers right here. Just it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put those in you know, some random dents, okay, they're there. So I have them there, but watch. Now I'm gonna go download to my controller. And on the first scan,
you'll see dint zero is cleared out. Um, and you see an issue. Oh, wait, that still only clears one bit. So if I go online again and do this command, it'll only clear that one bit. So it's still better than move command, but only clears one bit. Um, I will show you how to clear out an array in a second. So it was my bad. Um, I've been working in Siemens and other stuff, so my brain hurts. Um, so it's a Friday when I'm recording after a long week. So, But if I want to clear out an entire array, the command that I would utilize is and let me delete that and go in and add a rung. So a couple, you know, online edit. So let me double click the rung, go ahead and put another rung in. And let me, or let me just change this to a, what they call a file fill. File fill, sorry, wrong, file fill. So uh, destination, I'm gonna put that as dint zero, and I'm gonna just make this zero, destination this, and I will do a length of 32, whatever my length is, so 20. All right, so let me accept changes. And now you can, if I go back, let me cycle from program to, to run. So that the first scan kicks in. And now if I go to controller tags, you will see all my dents are clear. Uh, my whole dent is cleared out. So file fill is what you is a is what you would utilize to clear or set something up through an entire array. Clear is good for one bit or one thing or one um, one dent or one integer. So for instance, uh, I'm using this in my program, so let me double click on the rung. I can go in and, and, and add another setup, and I will do clear. And I'm using this in my program, an, an integer zero, and I can clear that out. Hit accept. Rung changes. Now everything is cleared out. Okay, sorry about that. But you can see the difference. Both are good commands. Both are, are, um, are, can give you a whole file fill or a um, destination uh, or just one bit. And, of course, a move command that you can set a preset some, just one thing to. So pick your poison. So this is my first status bit, but right now nothing is going. The reason why is this bit right here, TND is temporary end. I threw this in just to talk about it. This is something that you can utilize when you do troubleshooting. I could, if I wanted to, and I'll show you this right now if I get back to my pointer, I am going to move this right here down. Delete and insert. Hit accept. Now watch what happens. My timer goes, but it's not resetting because this timer isn't going. Because what this does is allow you to step through a process online activating one line at a time. It's going to go through once and end. Normally with the PLC, you're going to keep cycling back, cycling back, cycling back. Here, it'll go through a line, stop, and end. Okay? So I'll, I'll show you this again. Let me just take this and drag it to the – well, let me take it and drag it to the next line down. In theory, let me zoom out so I can do it easier. And now deletes that, adds that, come up here and finalize all edits in the program, hit yes. And now you can see it, the timer's timing and everything's counting up. But nothing, nothing else is being done. So, and it's count, and while things are counting up, commands aren't being done. I have a subroutine here. I'm going to get to that in a second, okay? But as I said, just quick, I just have a, two timers here generating a, a, a simple flashing bit where the timer one is resetting timer just so I can get something to count up 
and change and I'm just to make it a little bit bigger I'm just taking my counter accumulated and multiplying it by two so it's not just one two three but it's gonna keep going until I stop the program okay so this stuff it should be all Ruby review how to re do a resetting timer so doing a, a count up and doing a counter as well um, important to know with a counter, you need to cycle it on and off for this thing to count off because there's an inherent one shot in there. We'll talk about one shots a little bit more in a second. So I'm going to go to pro. I'm going to go offline so I can do some programming, and I'm just going to delete this this temporary. And I just want to show you that. A couple other things that we've talked about in the past is, is compare commands. I'm using a greater than command, and it will have a. So I say what's ever in a is greater than B. When that's true, the rung is going to go through and do whatever is over here. Um, I can do I can do tons of stuff. I can do compare. I can do a limit test. So that can give me a high end and a low end and say turn on between this two. Um, I can do a, um, an equal, not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to. Um, you feel free to utilize these in your programming because it will make your life easier. And when when we, when we you're doing these things, um, it's, it, it gives you a lot more flexibility. Just beware when you use an equal. Um, make sure you're using dints and not reals, because real, there's gonna be so little, there's gonna be, you're never gonna get exactly on because of the decimal and rounding with, with, um, with real float value numbers. So it will never come on if you're using real. It's better maybe to use a small limit if you want to use a real, um, but never use exactly equal. And if you have a process that's going really fast, equal is going to be on for a second. You may want to use a, a, a range of limits to get, give yourself some, some uh, leeway. So next thing is jump to subroutine. We've used this before, but it's usually just had, it just, it only had these two lines, a routine name and jump to subroutine. Well, um, something that you can do is use input and return parameters. So think of it this way. Um, if I'm using an input parameter, that's something that's in the program being used here, and then it's going to be sent to the subroutine directly. So if I have some numbers that I'm using in the main program that I want to be calculated, and this is really good for calculation, I can send that to the subroutine and bring it back in a, in, in a similar, in another dent or another value that I know. So once again, good, good bits, commands, but when, I, when I'm using the return parameter, input parameter, it just allows me to make things consistent so I'm not having a lot of random uh, bits being used in a program. It allows me to reuse subroutines potentially too. Um, without having to uh, rewrite everything. So this is, in this case, it's returning what, it's taking whatever values in dent zero and, and, and putting it directly into a different bit inside the subroutine. We'll show, talk about that in a second. And it's gonna return parameters and what's ever in those bits that it's returning, it's gonna place them in here. It's kind of like a move command almost, um, okay? So let me go to my subroutine. I have a subroutine here. It's called converter. You can see that right here on the on the on the in the taskbar. And let me go to converter. And here is a little something that I have. Again, this is not what's the practical purpose of it. I don't know. I'm trying to just show you how these commands work. So here's my first bit. If I'm going to have to take a bit from a a, a uh, main routine and take an input parameter to put it into the subroutine, I need this SBR box with an input parameter here to say where I want to put it. So if I, if you look back at the main routine, I'm saying take whatever's in dent one and basically use dent two as a, a, a in the subroutine. It could be anything, it just this is what we're using here. And if I needed to add more, I right click and you'll see here on the command something called add input parameter. I can add a bajillion input parameters. Uh, maybe not bajillion, but I could have a bunch of things going on. But I just need to make sure it's here. Now, one note is 
look at your main routine. I have input parameter one and then two return parameters. If I have multiple input parameters, it's going to go over in order. So if it's dent zero, one, two, three, for instance, and over here I have dent four, five, six, it's going to go basically the value of zero, one, two, three into four, five, six. Does that make sense? It's going to be a one to one like as you see in uh, one to one um, movement as you put things in order. So be careful and be be accurate when you move things around. You're not going to get the right answer. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. But if sometimes they automatically add it to remove it, just right click, remove instruction parameter. Right click, remove instruction parameter. See that right there. So now everything's hunky dory. Another thing that you should get in the habit of utilizing is this NOP. This just means no operation. If I don't have this in here, watch this, I'm going to delete this, it's going to give me errors because it's going to expect to do something over here. So if I have things over here like a subroutine or a jump label or something that I don't want to do anything over here with, all I have to do is in bits or just basically um, put in the NOP. So I always just double click on the rung. If I know the command, I'll just type it in up here into the, the command line and it'll show up. So again, if I double click on any rung, it's going to give me basically an ASCII text editor. And if I know my commands like OOTE, XIC, I'll just type it in because it's much easier than trying to find it up there. And so, so even just for instance, if I know, know I need a, a timer off, TOF, it's going to show up. If I double click the wrong, I can delete it. And if I can just put in my NLP. So just a little, little tip. So in this case, I have a push button set up to basically when it's not, it's a, it's a momentary normally open push button. So that when it's not engaged, it's going to power another timer. And the timer done bit is going to add something here. So you may be, and by the way, and just a reminder, one shots. One shot basically allows one scan cycle, only one scan to be true for one scan cycle. So if this stays true, this will only let it through basically for one scan cycle. If I didn't have this here, this would be adding to oblivion because every time it scans through, it's going to do that command. It's going to be true. One shots are a good way to, to manage programs and make sure you're not going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But I want to draw your attention over here because this is another good benefit of an array. Um, Normally, we have dent 2 here, right? And maybe I will put it into dent 2 or dent whatever. Well, I can also, one of the benefits of an array is I can make an indirect reference. So right now, remember in my main routine, I make, I said, make this 3, this integer 3. What I'm doing is saying when the first time through, take dent two, whatever's in dent two, which I got from my main routine, add a hundred to it, and put it into dent and whatever the value of x is. So dent three. And when I press a push button, it's going to take what's ever in x, add one, and put a four there. So that next time through the program, it's not going to put it into dint 3. It's going to put it into dint 4. And so it allows me to place values and store them in an array without replacing the value. Does that make sense? So it, it, there's a... There is a, you might, if those that have um, more PLC background, you're already thinking, well, what is, isn't there a, a command for that? Um, that so, sort of sounds like a dog's name. Yes, but for, we'll get to that, but I want to show you this because if you don't understand this, it may be harder to understand the other thing. Okay? So every time I push this button, it's going to advance to the next dent and put the value in that dent okay and i'll talk about this in one moment um because i gotta talk about control tags but 
here's my return to subroutine. And so it's going to take whatever is in dint x, so dint 3, dint 4, dint 5, dint 6, and it's going to return it to the main program. And it's also going to take whatever's in dint array 0 and return it to the main program. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, but this is a way for me to do math in a subroutine if I have a bunch of parts counts or something like that and not have to go, go you know, searching things out. Now, this average, another benefit of an array. How do we do an average? This plus this plus this plus this plus this divided by the number of things I added up, right? And it gives me a ballpark average. Well, if I have things in an array, I have a command called an average file that allows me to average everything in that array. And it utilizes the first bit of that array. So this is the first bit in that array. And not bit, first dent in that array. So you can't just, one of the troubles that students will have, well, this is, go up here, well, this is my array. Yes, it's true, but for it to work, program program with the first bit of, the first uh, dent of the array, because if not, it's going to give you errors. The dimension uh, to vary. So this is dimension zero. You could do one or two, one or two. But since we're on a single dimensional array, we want to do this. Because you could do the first dimension, you could do the third dimension, second dimension, or the, or the zero dimension. And where do you want to store this value? Now, this is just another a d double integer right here. And right now it's at zero. And one of the things that you'll need is a control um, tag. We'll talk about control tags a little bit more. But for all intents and purposes right now, it's just going to keep in, keep track of of where it is in the array and how and how, what it's averaging. You'll see it in practice, but you know if I ever it, it it just it's for for right now. Just think of it like a timer or a counter tag. And if I go up into my uh, my controller tags, you'll see a new. Uh, it's a control tag. And it has, uh, it has, and you'll see the uh, length bit, a position bit, an enable bit, an enable up, done bit. These are utilized in multiple different programs, so don't. It's not going to be uh, different commands, so it's just a generic. But this is what they call a control tag. Um, when we move forward with some of these array commands, the, this control tag will become very important. Um, but no, you just need to create it since it's fairly simple. You just need to do the length. So how many things I'm going to add to 15 and the start position, you usually put it zero and that will start right there. Okay. But I have it to clear out. So it will start over, um, there. Well, I'll run this program and show you everything, how it works in operation. So now as we return that value, if I go back to my main routine, it's going to turn those values into dit one and integer one, and then turn on a light. And just because I want to monitor something, I'm going to put in a move command. Um, int zero one int zero. One. So that way we can see what the average is and if it's moving or not, and kind of monitor it. And it this isn't really needed, but just let's go with it. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download this to the program. And uh, it doesn't matter. Download to the program. It's going to download, and then we'll monitor stuff, and you can see things kind of go. Okay. So you can see everything cleared out, everything's timing, kind of moving up. You're seeing this counter up. Let me go over to my convert and converter. You're seeing, you know, nothing is adding, but you can see a number is being deposited. You know, timer's on, it's not doing anything, it's being deposited. Um, there's a number on because it made that one move. 
Now watch, if I push in a push button, it's going to add. And now it is going somewhere else. So let me go to my controller tags, or let me go to watch table. I will um, go to view, uh, watch, and I'm going to open my dents, and, you'll, and that way you can monitor every time I push a button, see what happens. This one's slowly going on because this is my, remember, this is my input parameter for my subroutine, and this is where it's being put, so that's why this should be equal. Now, why, and this dent zero, one is my uh, return parameter, matches the last one I sent. And you can see how those values continue to populate as I push my push, my push button. Also notice, uh, dent array zero. Notice it continues to go up as I put numbers in to my initial dent. So watch that go up as I put a num another number in because it's averaging whatever value is the average value of all these numbers in the array. It's not 100% accurate. I'm just showing this for classroom purposes because normally I wouldn't have these two numbers in here bringing it down, but I wanted to show you how this works. And you can see too, with this one stop, it's not adding 100 to 150. It's not adding 100 to 154. This number keeps going up, but it's not adding it because this hasn't toggled yet to do something, okay? Same here. And it's not recalculating the average until I put hit, put, hit push button one. So I hit push button one. Now it actually toggles everything. It's important right here for this to act accurately work is that you toggle between a true to a false or a false to a true. Um, and back again, because this has got a one shot in it. If I if I take off this one shot, I'll just show I'll demonstrate this a little bit. Um, and if I hold down the push button, you'll see it's done. It's, and it's not going to, and it's faulted out because it just, and you can see up here, it faulted out. And because there, it just started adding stuff to a dent that didn't, there wasn't enough space to it. It's a math command issue. So I'll, I'll only show you the fault. If I click on this little button here, you can see the fault. Program fault, it can't be trapped in a fault routine array. Subscript is too long or control data is invalid. So be careful when you do these things because it went up to 20 and then stop because I only have 20 dents. Okay, so if I clear the major fault, hit okay, go to program, we put my one shot back in. Um, let me go, uh, let me put my one shot back in. Always need a bull with a one shot. Uh, one shot. Hit accept. Um, but yeah, fun times, isn't it? And it's, that's why this is X'd out because 20, there's, there's no dent 20. There, there's nothing you can do. But if I go back into my main program tags, or if I go back in my main pro, program somewhere, main routine, and I turn this to run, it should work fine. What did I do? So this is a good time for that temporary end. So let me go ahead and put a temporary end in. So, you know, hit clear major faults. I'm gonna accept all rung edits. Let me get them inserted above my first scan. Um, except run edits, and let me go to run mode. Let me go offline, and let me re-download. Well, anyway, this just showed you what not to do. Um, hope you had a good day, and I will clear this out and I'll show you something in a second. Okay, how I had to fix that, um, just a 
precursor is I set this back into three because it was stuck in the subroutine. It wouldn't return back because it was airing out. So I forced it to go to a mate to one of the major um, one of the non indirect tags. So if you're working with indirect tagging, this is an issue that could come up. Um, so I'm going to put this back as X because X is now good. And I'm going to put my dent array back as X as well. And it should run fine as long as So if I hit OK, everything should be hunky-dory. And um, what I will do here as a way of keeping that from happening is if, um, let me do if, uh, let me do a compare or um, equal, equal x, is 19, um, 19, hit enter. What I would do is have a memory bit. A memory bit, turn on, that will basically um, stop, uh, basically we'll reset everything. So bool one. So if that gets up to that, it should reset everything back. All right, that way we could make sure that when that gets up to 319, then that turns on and resets everything before we get another math error. So those are some things to keep in mind. All right, thank you. Have a good day.